Okay then, hello everybody else. Welcome back to the resin 3D printer. So we're, this is completed right now from yesterday and we're going to take out the resin material. So now this is where it gets a little more messier and a bit interesting because right now I have to take this out. So I have my gloves right here ready to go and I'm gonna try, I'm oh, actually not gonna try. We're going to take this thing out. So we're gonna do the exterior of the, the panel or the container first. Okay, there we go. Get my gloves on. Make sure you use the gloves right here. This is the one that you'll be using right now. And also I have to be careful with my clothes too as well. But if, as long as we're being okay, uh, being careful, we'll be fine. So we're gonna remove this very carefully upward. That's it, without hitting the build plate. And this is where it comes out right here too as well. And also too as well, be aware of the fumes. Uh, there will be fumes right away. So make sure you have an open space right now. I'm in the garage, so we're good to go on a very large scale. So it just evaporates up in the air. That's it. And also I'm have a fan next to the, the area. So on this one right here, I'm going to zoom in. On this one, the resin print, you'll see these ooze or these excess material right here. So there's a excess resin onto here. And most of the time they'll give you on this one here, the Legal Mars 2 Pro. Uh, they gave me this one right here, this little drip tray right here, so it'll just um, slide inside of there and it'll drip onto there. But if you don't have one, um, try and make one on your own. If you do have this printer, make sure you make your own tilt system. It's like a 45 degree angle downward slot. Make sure you do your calibration that, but you can go from there. So I'm going to remove this knob right here. If you do have a knob, make sure you undo it. Most printers will actually have different ones. Most of the time it'll have a knob, which will be straightforward. I'm going to bring it out. I'm going to tilt it over here, but I'm going to hover on top of the resin area. And as you can see, all these resin are now going downwards. So I'm going to bring this guy over here, put this guy inside, put this guy inside here as well, lock it in, and that way it'll lock itself in. So hopefully I don't get no resin on me. I think I did. I'm just going to rub it off, which is fine. Don't worry, I'm wearing gloves right here, so I'm good to go. So now that from here, I'm going to use, a non, I'm going to use my clean finger. I'm going to confirm it. We're good. Let's cancel out. So I'm going to print another one later on. So I'm going to let this drip down a little more. It's good. It shouldn't take about five minutes, 10 minutes to come off. Or maybe about, no, it shouldn't take about a minute or two to drip off. But if it's like an excess one, uh, I'd rather just do like fully cure two minutes, three minutes of this to come off. So, and you can actually see it right away. It's like dripping very slowly, but that's how it looks right now. So it's going to drip on its own. So. Hopefully it's, it should be fine right now. Uh, yeah, I think it should be fine. Let me do like one more drop and that will go from there. Okay, now I got everything else ready to go. I have to prepare my container. So I'm gonna zoom this out. There you go. So my container is gonna be right here. This little um, IPA, make sure I labeled it too as well. Make sure you label it, it says IPA 91%. Make sure you use 91% alcohol because it's very, it's the best one to actually clean it out. If you use 70% or 60%, it's never going to rub off. Um, you need strong, strong content to actually clear out those ones. I'm just going to do a little one because I'm just adding in some new areas. Okay, it's okay. It's a little splash, but that's all right. That's fine. But just do a little bit because I think I have a little bit of these little tags right here. I'm going to do it once right here. That's it. But I probably could do some more um, um, printing because I think I lost some of the areas of those components, but it should be fine. Uh, Air dust is good to go. Make sure you, you uh, have a clear open space too as well because, it's, again, this is alcohol. It will evaporate and don't um, smell the fumes itself. So kind of be careful on that one. So I'm going to move this guy around here. Um, it will get sticky later on in the future with these containers. So kind of be aware of that. Just give you guys a heads up on that one. Okay, now I'm going to go at this right here with my clean hand. Undo it right here. Remove it because now it's already been done. Shake it off. There we go. I'm going to put onto my paper towels right here. Uh, this has been used a lot of time with the paper towels. It's okay. Just as long as it's done, it's done. But I usually change it for every two weeks or whenever it gets really bad on the resin material. And that's that what I'm going to do is just like scrape it off. This one came off very fantastic. This one just slide in. This one didn't uh, do what it's supposed to be doing, but it's okay. I can still remove it off. But there you go. See, it actually comes off, but now it kind of stopped for some reason. Um, now that I'm going to drop this guy in here. That's it. That's all I'm going to do. And I contaminate my gloves. Uh, oh no. <laughs> You'll see what happened. Or I hope it is like inside of there. I hope so. There you go. There you go. Make sure you jab in there very, very well. 
and I think someone splattered onto me, but it's okay, that's fine. Not the splatter, but it kind of like those little supports broke up and gone to me, but it just bounced off. Lock it in, we're good to go. My gloves are clean. Bring this guy out, and we're good to go. Okay, uh, it should be okay. I think I have to use alcohol to remove those stuff. There you go. Put this guy in there, and I hope it came out okay. Okay, you notice that on here, there's no see-through on there. So I hope the excess material is on there and it's just got to remove off once I put the alcohol on there. I hope so. Finger cross on those ones. So now we're done with this one here. This is with my clean gloves. Bring it over here. Oh, actually, wipe it down. I'm just going to wipe this guy down because it's already contaminated with the resin material. I can just rub it down onto that one, onto the, the paper towel. Should be okay. Now I'm going to do is just go in here with my gloves and just rapidly just remove it. And as you can see from the, let's see, I'm gonna bring this guy down here. As you can see from the chlor or alcohol, it turned foggy right now. So I'm gonna keep rinsing it off, off and off, over and over again. Because this resin material is very sensitive, so it's very good. Uh, it actually removes all of the porosity off of there, and that way it'll remove some of the other excess materials. So hopefully that does fantastic. Okay, there we go. So, actually, I gotta be careful too as well. This one, it should break off right away because since it's like a light material, but kind of like don't force yourself onto there because it will um, become a issues with the light material. Just take your time with it. Break off every support slowly and steady. There we go. After that, I'm going to just break the bottom. And voila. And this thing came out fantastic. Look at this. Okay, it was the excess material inside, inside of there. And you can actually see it. It's like a see-through. Yay. So now this means I have to like do some more swish. Clean it a little more here and there. Mm, I think I have to use like a different stronger one. So let me grab a stronger one. This time I'm gonna use my um, my brush. So this is the one I'll be using right now. Uh, I do have gloves on there, so that's good news. And it'll just come off. But again, rub on there too as well. Make sure you have this type of brush, a little more stronger. Because if you have one that's a little bit lighter, it's not gonna come off. It's not gonna remove any processes inside there. So it's not gonna be good as it should have been because you need a heavy duty um, brush to actually remove any excess that's very stubborn uh, like for the crystal ones it was very stubborn to actually remove it I have to use a lot of alcohol to actually remove those process but again I was just learning along the way but with this material it was easy for me to actually remove so now I'm gonna put this aside right here onto the area on the on the table on the on the paper towel and go from there and this one I'm gonna do this one by one. So this is gonna take a while for, for me to actually bring them all. So time to do a time lapse. There we go. So hopefully that took longer than I expected it to be, but again, but if you're asking questions like, how come you didn't break it like the other um, resin material where you got to just put it onto the table and just bend it over and it's just gonna be, it'll, broke off, it'll break off easily. You can't because these ones are, has a thin base onto it. So as you can see, this is a little more thinner and I don't wanna risk it to actually break it off from there. So that's one thing that you have to be careful because some supports will break off at some areas while the other ones will not break off so you have to take your time to actually find the source of it and on top of this too as well if you have like models like the godzilla or the t-rex you might have different um, areas that has a different amount of geometry onto it as well and depends where you actually have the supports being su on um being added onto that will take a long time too as well so that one that's the one thing that's gonna be a difference okay there we go we got our brand tickets here so that's good news and after that um i am going to let these dry up for now i'm gonna use the other excess paper towel to actually damp it down but also at the same time let the other ones other side to actually uh, get um 
get dried out because these uh, this is alcohol which is good news it'll evaporate quickly but also we have to be careful because sometimes some of the other resin material might be on there too as well even though it might be clean off with the alcohol not with the 90 percent sometimes it'll not come off depending how um how well it's gonna get stuck onto the um the print itself so uh, let's go double check everything else we're good right now so i'm good i'm gonna rinse off my hands there we go i'm gonna remove my gloves so we're good we're safe i'm gonna put those back the lid back on and i'll let go from there okay now should i continue the next print i want to say yes but i think we can yeah i'm gonna print out the another one so i'm gonna print out another uh print over here zoom onto there so i'm gonna print another one again i'm gonna print out the lattice structure because i don't have one right here apparently i don't know what happened from there but I'm going to print out these guys right here. These ones did fantastic. I do love it. And I do love the, the lattice structure. But again, this is just like a, a demonstration from the schools that was given to me. But this is the one that worked. I will try to print out for them. That way I'll be as a extra um, little one. But I do love the other one, the bigger uh, lattice structure, which I will print out next time. And that will print over net, overnight, which I'm going to show you guys by next day. Or hopefully by a short. So. Okay. So I'm going to go damp this guy down now. Oops, a little bit too much. Helper. There you go. So now I'm going to damp this guy down a little more to remove some of the excess off. Not that once we're done with it, it should be ready to go to begin to um, cure itself in the, into the um, ultraviolet. So. Or the cure station. So, But yeah, this is where, how it is for a long, long time. And it will take a while to get used to it and sometimes it's not gonna get, be okay but sometimes it'll come out fantastic as it is from the final results rather than the 3d printer uh 3d printer you have to you like take your time with it adjust the settings and then adjust some of the area because again it, it will vary on how well you uh, print it out from there okay i think some of ours are already dry now let's see oops so for one because i can see it from the sun uh from my lights some are still not dry because if it's not dry and if i put it in the incubator it's gonna have that uh, glossy texture and it's not gonna go very well okay now into the incubator which is this guy right here or into the curing station so i'm gonna remove this guy on the top it's just a little simple base inside of there with a ultraviolet light inside of there that's all that there is i'm gonna say it's ready and this one actually does like much support as much as it can but i can just lay on the on the base of it like that I want to add in some supports on there. Whoops. These guys are stuck on here. There we go. Yeah, that should be okay. Uh, triple sides. Feels very cold, which is interesting. Uh, this guy is okay. Just move it a little more. There we go. And I'm going to lay it around on the base area. There we go. There we go. Go. I better get my flu shot whenever I can. Oops, this is dirty, dirty, dirty. So I remove the back access material. Oof, that was a lot right there. Okay, so now we just gotta flip over then. Let them all cure the other way around. Oh yeah, I definitely need to flip it over. Okay, there we go. So let that dry up. This is ready to go. Okay, it'll fit as much as it can and make sure it's always in a flat base because you want it all cure into one area. Or into, it has to cure all over because that way you'll get a uh, evenly um, spaced part. Okay, then the top one, it has your timer. You have the plus and minus, you can add in more time, which is like you can plus like about maybe a minute, two minutes, three minutes. If you want to minus it to reduce it down and add the power on and start. Okay, so I'm gonna press up. We got 30 seconds. So I'm gonna do about four or two minutes to let it fully cure. Press play and it's already starting right away. And as you see from the inside, it's now dancing from the inside. There you go. And that's it. Then we'll see the final results after one minute and 40 seconds.
Okay, it is now done for two minutes. And we're gonna do the same thing again over on the other side. So we're gonna flip it over because it has to cure both sides. So, and yeah, this is where it comes in where you need a stand for this one right now because you need like standing upwards so that way it'll fully cure all the way through. But since I don't have one, I have to do this very slowly, but which is okay, that's fine by me as long as I'm doing the other stuff on the outside. So I'm gonna do about one minute, 30 seconds. It should cure right away. We're good to go. Alrighty then, now it's fully cured, so go we'll bring this out here. Alrighty then, I'm gonna bring it out here on the table, and that's it. And this is where it came out right here, comparing from these two right here, from the cure and not cure, so this is what it looks like. If I can get the, there we go. So this is what it looks like when it's cured, fantastic, I can touch it, I can do whatever I want with it. And you can see it just does, out, it does a fantastic shimmer right now. Compared to the non-cure one, Hopefully it does. There we go. So you can actually see the coloration where it uh, doesn't actually darken up a little more. Cut it out. That one darks up a little more. The other one is, is like the non-cure one. Come on. There we go. I'm thinking I have to don't move. So there's the one with the non-cure and the, the other one that has cured right away. So you can actually see the coloration. And you notice that this one's kind of shimmering on the on the glossy side. This one is not uh, slightly shimmering. So this is what it looks like from now. Because again, it fully cured. It's now a solid piece. So this is very interesting. So I think this is the one I'll be stopping right now because I don't need that much of the items until later on. Until I do my manufacturing on the items itself. So, And these are just like name tags to actually um, um, label my components. So that's it. That's all I can do for now. That's all there is today. That's how you do your resin prints. So kind of like... Like I said before from the other videos, it's not about to actually um, bring it down. It's just basically trying to let you understand how it looks like, what it looks like from the, on the resin print itself. And that it does have a lot of downside of how you actually um, manage it. And also it depends on what your purpose is on the resin printing itself. So that's one of the things I'm going to give you guys advice on that one. But again, you do a lot of interesting stuff with it. I do understand that it does have a geometry of it. Not that very strong as the PLA plastic. This is very fragile. It will break on its um depending on how well it's sturdy or if it will um consider its impact. So this one will break apart even though it's a lot more bigger and it does is very fantastic on the large scale. However, it's it, it, it varies differently on how well it's fragile on itself, including the Godzilla, the, the T-Rex, and the Dilophosaurus. It will break off every now and then. And also too as well, it depends on the human um, contact as well. So kind of be careful. Uh, this is very safe right now. So as long as I cure it fully um, hardened, should be okay. It should be fantastic. And the other ones too as well, we will try, I will try to use those ones later on in the future for future references. Hopefully, like this right here. Hmm. Oh, I did wrong. Okay. Um, I can actually do whatever I can with these ones right here with the different um, work area. Um, which is fine. That's that's okay, as long as I know what to do with those uh, excess material without wasting it. That'll be okay too as well. So, um, hopefully this video will shorten down a little more because of the uh, the time of like clean up the curing and that's it. So, hope you guys enjoyed this video. Hope you guys seen everything else on the resin printing and also too as well. Don't um, don't bring yourself down. It's okay. It's just it's understanding to figure out what is the purpose of this one and will you risk it and also how deep is your pocket for this resin printer itself. And also, what's your idea for this one, this one, for the cleanup, and also for cleaning up the um, the alcohol content. So, just give you guys a heads up on that one. Okay, give it a like, subscribe, and also check out our website, donation page, help us out. And we'll continue this on within the Navajo community. Okay, thank you. Goodbye. Have a good day.